Scoutly cloud triggers are here. And when I come back from this transition, I'm going to share my phone screen with you so you can see what they're all about. In this video, I'm going to tell you what they do. I'm going to tell you what they don't do. And I'm going to do a walkthrough to show you how to basically use these. My name is Manny, and this is Manny's Book Bag. All right, folks, so here we are. I am sharing my screen of my cell phone because I really just want to show you uh, what these uh, new cloud triggers are all about. Uh, before I get started, I just want to let you all know in, in this video, I am not going to get into how to set profit triggers. I've already made that video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and link it in the YouTube uh, card up above so that if you are having a hard time wrapping your head around how to make effective profit triggers or if you're just not really sure the best way to go about it, I would encourage you to go ahead and look at that video as well after this one. Uh, in this video, I really just want to show you what the new screen looks like and kind of break down and explain to you how you can use cloud triggers really effectively in your business, especially if you have several business models running at the same time. First of all, I want to go over some of the changes to the screen itself. Uh, we have three new green buttons up top, as well as a trigger set uh, setting there right below that. Uh, the most important thing for you to know is that once you receive the new version of Scoutly, uh, if you had any triggers in place, they didn't go anywhere. Uh, all of your old triggers and settings would be under the default trigger settings. And that is uh, one of the big scares people have. They think everything got wiped out. It, it, it certainly did not. Uh, but I just want to explain to you the mechanics of this. Uh, what you're going to want to do when you get into this is, you know, you, you may not want to change anything. You might be happy with how things are, or you might potentially take advantage of some of the dynamics of having way more than uh, 20 profit triggers at your disposal at one time. Uh, for me, uh, it's also very important to explain that cloud triggers are not team mode. Uh, cloud triggers and team mode are, I'm sure, eventually going to go hand in hand. Uh, but these are not designed, if you have multiple devices, these are not designed for you to push out to uh, individual devices as you wish. One of the important things to understand is that if you have a team member that is out on the field and you have created new triggers for them under your account, they wouldn't really have any way of getting into uh, those triggers unless they logged in under your username and password and then clicked on the download button in the middle to take in the settings that you have put on the cloud. Uh, that's really the only workaround right now. Other than that, I know the... Uh, the Scoutly team is working on a couple of really big projects, so I know that team mode might not be out for some time otherwise. But getting back to cloud triggers, uh, what you basically have in front of you is a default trigger set, which is the only setup that you have when you receive the new version of Scoutly. And then what you're going to want to do, and here's basically how it works, uh, you have to figure out a strategy for yourself, and I'm just going to go ahead and open this up and give you... Uh, a basic strategy. We have a default trigger set, uh, but uh, honestly, I, I'm come up with a couple of other ideas here for you. Coming to the very top of the screen, if let's say, for example, I have a couple of very specific uh, sources that are extremely cheap, uh, I could create a bunch of trigger sets with uh, those specific buy costs and profit expectations. Uh, you know, there's a lot of used bookstores out there as well that are going to charge you a minimum of two to three dollars uh, per book. So you may want to have a different setup for them. So uh, half price books is just my example. You know, around here in Ohio, uh, even if I'm shopping in their clearance area, it looks as though I'm going to be spending three dollars uh, per book, no matter what. That's going to create a very different profit expectation. And it may also cause me to be a little tighter as far as when I start bringing down 
uh, which used offer I'm going to look at uh, as far as coming up with a target price. So just uh, you know, just a heads up about that. You can use profit triggers uh, on the cloud so that you can just swap back and forth uh, between specific businesses. Uh, by costs and uh, you know instead of having to turn on and off specific triggers you can just uh, flip over to this trigger set instead and it's going to change your buy cost in your uh, main screen and it's also going to you know adhere to those specific triggers that you set up for them another one is like for your mid-range like if you're spending a little over a dollar but under two you know you can create a trigger set for them as well if you have a bulk model, you can create uh, triggers with a uh, dwindled down buy cost and a perhaps a lower expectation of profit uh, per unit because it's all already owned. If you're doing Merchant Fulfill, you can set up triggers that are you know specific to Merchant Fulfill. You just uh, you skip all the other trigger sets for new FBA, for used FBA, and you just focused on the... Uh, you know, whichever uh, whichever used offer you want to focus on, you you can skip the used buy box, or you can use it if it's lower. So you can create merchant fulfilled filters as well, and you can toggle over to those if you're out there looking for items that you can sell that same day. Uh, you're also going to notice that I have triggers for shoes, grocery, as well as toys. Uh, this, I think, is an absolute game changer. If you're in retail arbitrage, if you're doing RA, you're already taking advantage of the fact that you've got database availability of these items to really speed you up. But now, instead of turning triggers on and off underneath the others category, you can go ahead and create those triggers. And let's say it's quarter four and it's the first week in December and I'm looking to find some toys for that last shipment that I'm sending out to Amazon. Uh, I can toggle my trigger set over to the toys and I can just go nuts on database mode, scan out a couple of aisles in the big box stores in no time flat. You can basically use this to discover your own bolos and shop where no one else is. And uh, yeah, I think it's just a, the ultimate tool for retail arbitrage and actual on the ground scouting. So the possibilities are really endless with cloud triggers and it really helps you to toggle back and forth, especially if you're diverse in your business and you're selling in multiple categories uh, or if you're basically swimming at very different depths as far as your buy cost in books, CDs, DVDs, whatever the case is. Uh, as far as the mechanics of it goes, uh, here's how it's going to work. Uh, if Let's say, for example, I'm in this particular trigger set and I'm making some changes here. What I would do is I would just click on the specific category that I'm making changes for. And then once I'm done, uh, on the top right there, I'm going to click Upload. And what that is going to do is that's going to take the changes that I just placed on my phone, and it's going to upload them to the cloud. And that's just one way to, uh, to work that. Uh, but there is another way to work it if you click on the top left under cloud, it's going to show you all of your trigger settings. Now, if you make changes to your uh, specific triggers and you do so while you're on the cloud, uh, you can save all those changes on the cloud. And when you're ready to put those changes onto your phone, instead of hitting upload, which is going from your phone to the cloud, you're, you're going to want to click download. That takes the current settings that are on the cloud and moves them to your phone instead. So uploading is when you're going from your phone to the cloud and downloading is when you're on the cloud and you're going from the cloud and putting those changes onto your phone. And it's really just that simple, folks. Uh, it, this will allow you to uh, pivot from one business model to another on the fly while you're in the wild and you're making decisions. Uh, it's also going to give you the opportunity to uh, make potential changes even if you don't use them you can just go ahead and make a trigger set for them and uh, test them at your leisure uh, and it's just that well there you have it folks they're very simple to use i'm certainly going to try and take full advantage of them as i develop my profit triggers one last thing to note is that if you are using basic or advanced triggers 
Cloud trigger sets are not going to support those. They are specifically used just for the profit triggers. But here's the question of the day. Have you already started messing around with cloud triggers? And are there any strategies that I didn't cover in this video? Go ahead and put in your comments below because I would love to hear how you folks are using them. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, make sure you turn on those bell notifications so that you find out every time I drop a new video. Until next time, let's go make some money.